it start. Can I get the reaction that you are seeing and hearing my voice uh, also? I think. So now we're going to talk about airflow. I think by now most of you have installed this package also, but we're going to talk about it so in, in the tutorial as well. Is that a question? So uh, Airflow, what is Airflow? Airflow is an open source workflow management. Its purpose is for orchestrating or scheduling computational workflows, data processing pipelines. So its main, its main purpose is for scheduling, orchestrating, monitoring the tasks that we are going to give it. So it will uh, do the management of that scheduling. So it allows us programmatically to alter schedule monitor workflows it use python language so we have to hard code it uh, hard code everything that we want the airflow to implement on our python code on our python module so it is programmatically done and based on its structure it will orchestrate schedule the tasks that we give it on their on the platform so what are the reasons why we need uh, airflow so for simpler pipelines it might not be useful but for complex workflow management uh, it can handle dependencies and sequences of tasks effectively because everything works uh, based on schedule based on have a very good management so uh, of handling complex workflows would be much easier with airflow uh, the other reason would be scalability, skills to manage large number of tasks efficiently can be done with Airflow, a dynamic scheduling, so it can offer flexible scheduling options to accommodate for rest process needs. There are different types of scheduling that you can do with Airflow that can give you dynamic scheduling, uh, reliability and error handling. And so as the name suggests, it handles error, tasks are failing or not it has these options to for error handling uh, extensibility and integration which is it integrates numerous external systems and can be extended with custom components if you have seen the airflow ui there are options to connect with other external uh, tools external tools like Postgres, uh, Spark, different, there are a lot of there, a lot of tools there that we can integrate with our Airflow DBT also. We can integrate and use it for our own advantage, and it helps us to monitor and log. There are, it has a user user into user friendly interface that can let you control, manage uh, the, tasks, the tasks that you have put it, that you have scheduled to be under the Airflow management. So when it comes to airflow, what are the key concepts that you are likely to see? Or you are, the key concept you have to know is the first one would be DAG. Uh, airflow is the whole concept of airflow, followed the DAG principle, which is the DAG aggravation is direct acyclic graph. As the name suggests, there is no any loops in, uh, in DAG, everything, follows one step to another a direct straight line. There's no loops. One task has to end for the next task to start working. 
So there's no loops, there's no between loops between tasks. One has to finish and the other has to continue. It's, it, it follows a cyclic graph. The whole process of airflow follows uh, a cyclic graph with doing uh, executing tasks. So uh, the other, this is the dark concept. I hope you understand that one. It's just everything is a cyclic. There is no any loop, any, everything is direct. One task will end, then the next will continue, and the other will continue. There might be parallel uh, tasks implementations, where there's no any looping implementation in a flow. So it follows the concept of DAC. Uh, the other concept you have to know is operators in Airflow. There are a lot of operators which you can look on their documentation, and each op operator has different purpose for different um, use case. So the the most common, like Python operator, Bash operator, you can use them for different tasks. And there are other shows, so these are not the two, but there are operators that helps you to um, manage the, the tasks in better way. Uh, so these operators are the main things one should understand when it comes to how you can use Airflow for your advantage. And the other would be tasks, which are of the work within a task that is a particular matter or functionality that you want to be to, to be executed on your workflow would be a task so it, the task can be loading a data from database it can be transforming the data to something else or it can be running some module the task is just something the action that you want your app to execute uh, the other would be dependencies Determine the order of task execution. Use set using with shift operator task one task two means yeah just the flow of how it works. Uh, the other scheduler which you will will give it a scheduling time time and date where you when when the time the task should should run should execute. This is the scheduler. And then other people executors which are which are responsible for executing your tasks there are different executors that uh, su that airflow supports uh, like this one the special the local the seller is just optional executors that can help you they have different uh, functionality for your task which you can um, again uh, check out on the documentation there are hooks that can help you uh, that can just help you your job easier, uh, like uh, hooks that helps you to connect with databases, SQL, Postgres. Uh, hooks are just some kind of method that you can use for different purposes. So uh, Airflow have hooks and XCOMs when cross communication. This is a future of Airflow that allows different tasks to communicate with each other, uh, bypassing messages or data from the database, or it can help you from the XCOM to help you to pull data from the Airflow database or out of the, uh, or some pass a data to the database, or it just, uh, the, the whole purpose is to, it they pass information from one place to another. And there is, the UI web interface where you can see all of your DAC implementation work on the user interface and manage it quite easily. So this is a user interface where you can view a lot of things about your DAC. There are three main components when it comes to Airflow. Okay, the first one would be the airflow scheduler. Uh, the airflow scheduler, which passes the DAC, it checks the schedule interval that you give it when you write your DAC, and it starts scheduling based on your given time and date. So by passing the yeah, so once it get that information, the interval that that you want to one task to be implemented, it pass that information data that dating uh, start date or indicate scheduling time to the workers where the airflow workers would be after they get their data from the airflow scheduler they start 
executing the task based on that timeline or based on that scheduling time. You schedule and execute them. So the airflow, the airflow workers are responsible for or, uh, executing the task based on the time that they get from the airflow scheduler. So as seen here, they are the, the responsible for doing the work when it comes to executing the, the task. And the last one would be the airflow web server. After the tasks are ended, our step like that is just that they are responsible for visualizing the doc based on the scheduler and provide them interface for users to monitor doc and run series. So if when after the doc has been executed and executed and the output, whatever the output is, it, if it's fail or success, whatever the output is after the execution, they will display on the Airflow web server and you can see your workflow uh, where it failed or it got successful. So they will be responsible for visualizing the data. So this is just almost what we have talked about, but in a chart. So you have these DAG files, which you guys are responsible for writing. This is uh, developers as we will write DAG files for different purposes. So after we write that DAG file, we will push it. We will run our airflow. And the first one that we pick from what we write is the uh, airflow scheduler. It will pick the timeline for each task and it will pass it for the airflow workers. And based on that timeline, the airflow, the airflow workers will execute each task in each DAG file. And after the execution happened, they will store the information from the execution to a database to the airflow default database. And the scheduler also store to the database. So your information, whatever your drag is uh, written, will also be saved on the airflow database. So you can visually see it on the user interface also. So both the air workers and the air schedulers, whatever the information they get from the DAG files, they will store it to the database, the meta store. And once the execution ended, the Airflow web server will be responsible. It will feed the data from the database and display it in a more attractive and understandable, readable way. Uh, readable way. So the user can then visualize is the is data pipeline or is tasks. Uh, each task that you want or she, they want to implement in this Airflow web server usually in more readable. So this is pretty much how the Airflow works. So it's that someone will push a data, a DAG Python module that specify each task with their timeline, their schedule timeline. And then this is the process how it will be displayed and monitored with the Airflow platform. This is some similar kind of representation with this one. It's just some other graph. There will be the task will be downloaded, which will be drag files and it will be processed by the scheduler, by the workers, and it will be stored to the database, the meta database, and then finally will be displayed from the database. So this is very much the whole process that happened behind the airflow platform. So this is how the DAG workflow is. It's a direct uh, a cyclic graph. There's no loops in DAG. What, if a, a task will start for this, some other tasks to be implemented. First, all these tasks has to finish. When they finish, these tasks will continue being executed. And when this one, once this one is finished, then the other task will continue running. And these tasks, tasks are not are independent of each other, so they can run independent uh, run parallelly. But this task and this task doesn't run parallelly. This task has to wait for this task to finish. After this finish, and this will continue, then the result will appear. This is how a drug workflow looks like. A straight working process line. There's no looping or doing things 
in a loop. Everything is straightforward, which make airflow, uh, which make for well, airflow to execute tasks, to manage tasks more efficiently because everything is straightforward. There is no any complication in how he perform, uh, control these tasks. One goes after the other. So for the airflow installation with Docker, you can install it simply by following these steps. Just follow these steps and finally just say one, this uh, local host 8080. Docker has to be installed on your machine for this to work and detailed explanation if you need how the installation should work you can find it on the documentation of airflow they have also did uh, how you can install it with docker you can follow it there as well so after you finish this commands after you run this command make sure to create three folders on your airflow working space the docs file in the logs file and i think one of them was in the plugins folder. Let's create this one. Most importantly, you will need this one, the docs folder, where you write your drag uh, code to run some tasks, to perform some tasks on your airflow and to manage it. So I already installed it, but once you install it based on the command that I just showed you on the slide, all you have to do is start up your broker. When you run it, if you run the airflow Docker image and it will start working. Let's just wait. Just to show you the Docker compass file, when you install it, this is the file that will be loaded. So, uh, here by I'm using the Scalar Executor. I'm downloading this particular executor to perform to execute my task, my task that I'm going to write. Uh, there is, it has its own post to press database. It's just a lot of configuration I found here that you can check out. Check out. Okay, I think it's done now. Just open. for the first time, you just can sign. You can sign up in the Google. If there is a problem with your drug code, you will try an error like this one, which you can so you can go to the particular file and see that what the problem is. Okay. Yeah, if there's an error, when you click it, it will uh, list out the problems and you can just go back to your code and see fix the problem so these are the already installed uh, uh, already pushed the app files default airflow files that are already stored in the postgres of airflow so by default it, these files will come up so you can see there are different types of schedules right you can see the data set schedule type the daily Type these are different types of schedule. We're going to use a daily for the schedule to happen daily. The data set, it's, it's, um, it's regarding the data set that you have. You can schedule your workflow, your airflow workflow based on the data set. If there's, if there's any change on the data set and everything like that, then it can trigger the workflow to run again, which you can look up on the document. But for this demo, we can focus on the daily one. But Definitely, considering you guys can work on data sets, check that out. So, what else is this? You can see user interface would be you, the owner would be displayed. It's a, 
Airflow is the owner. For your drag, you have to name. You can give your name for as an owner. So it's just uh, these are just simple information that you can give your drag. Uh, if, if you can see here, there's tags here. This also options that you can put. You can write tags and put this kind of tags for your dog workflow, and you will see it here. Tags uh, in for description. If there is a description for your drag, you can write description for it, and it will display here. So whoever is seeing your work also can just this just our interactive ways to give information about your drag. There's nothing special. Uh, so let's just run some and here. Um, there are connections that you can integrate with your drag and have a connection to fetch data and stuff like that. You can connection like that. There are different functionalities on the user interface. So uh, you there's also the documentation here, which you can go to there and you can find everything, anything you need to know, how you can use Airflow for your advantage on the documentation as well. So let's just see some example and see how we can see the workflow on the effort, the simple uh, functionality. So here uh, we're gonna calculate a square root of some random number. So if the square root of whatever the random number is, if square root uh, is greater than 20, it will return 20. True. If it's not, it will come false. It's a simple mathematical functional function. So the task basically uh, is just checking whatever the square root of is. If is is the output of the square root greater than twenty or not? A simple uh, DAG operation. The code, as you can see, is a Python code. Uh, it's just the only thing that you have to try to understand would be the uh, operators. You, the airflow imports that you're going to use, which you can understand from the documentation as well. You're going to use this with context to initialize your drag workflow, and you can give it a name for your drag. It could be anything. After that, you can specify the time where this drag should be executed. So I didn't give it a specific time, but I did give it a date saying, from now on, you can uh, run this stack, this stack workflow. Uh, my interval, I make it daily, it can run daily. And you can hear such a pause. If you want to give it a tax, you can give it a tax for my workflow. Task and just say, let's just say I have one tag in data engineering for this DE. Uh, if you want to give it a description, there are a lot of parameters that you can pass here. Uh, just for my head, tags and descriptions are uh, are there. Uh, th there are also others under the DAG function. Go to the recommendation in the DAG package. What are the possible uh, parameters I can pass here to make my DAG more better? So these are just enough for now. Uh, so. I am um, I'm considering this functionality to run two models. Just let's just consider just uh, I, I trained some model, and that model is checking if it can greater the square root of some random number that is greater than twenty or not. Here with the function here is twenty or not. So that model that return a value more than twenty, it's a better model. If not, it failed. Okay, so I'm just uh, just testing a simple function just to see the workflow, how it looks like in the airflow. So this function basically is the simple Python function where it pick a random number and just pass it to get the square root of that number and the return the value will be returned. This is the module. I'm just uh, running it twice to see from the two, because it's random number, I'm gonna get different values for different, uh, when I run it twice, so I'm running it twice. I'm just considering the other module here. So after I specify what my function is, 
Here, I'm going to use the Python operator that can help me hold this function in user form advantage. So uh, here, it needs a task ID. These are also parameters that should that must be fulfilled for the operator to execute the task. So this is a module name that I gave it here. I gave it module one and module two right here. See, so here you have to initialize it with that one module ID. It could be any of it. Um, and then I put the ID. It's just a simple standard structure you have to follow. So after specifying that, I'm going to choose here the best performing module. We'll choose between the two models which perform the best. So I'm uh, the best performing module will be called. And the uh, output would be either a success or fail. If it's greater than 20, it will return a success. If it's not, it will return a failed output. There's nothing to it. So uh, if I run it like this without specifying which task goes before which, uh, which task, I have to specify which function I have to first execute, then follow, and then uh, up to the final output, I have to specify which module to run first. So if I didn't specify that with the, this right our operator, which function to look for the dog, it will not understand it. It will just list it randomly, and that's not uh, the purpose of DAG. So here I'm just specifying this uh, right operator. It's also another type of operator in a flow. It's specifying it first, run this function, which is this one. This function will run both two models. And then I'm calling this one, the base performing model, to get the which one is the better model which is the better performance and based on that output it will either return success or failed so the first one to be run would be this one and this function here i'm trying to make it more dynamic by just calling it one time and passing the ids twice as a uh, as a loop but i can also break it down and call each model separately and that is just making unnecessary functions repeat again and again the function is the same and just like calling module one by, and calling module two twice on this just by saying calling module one and then again calling module two it's just you are calling the same module but you are calling it twice and you are repeating it so to avoid that repetition uh, you can pass it like a loop like this one. I'm just calling the same function model twice just by passing the ID of that model and it will run twice. So after this one, let's just uh, run. So by default, it will, uh, the airflow, whatever change you make, as long as you make it, uh, you save your changes here, it will uh, refresh itself. So you don't have to exit and run again. So let's just go to the here and what was the name that we put for our drug? It is try drug, right? So we have to find our drug based on this name. Okay, there it is, the try drug. Let's refresh it, maybe. Yeah, you see the tag that I just put it, it will be displayed. It shouldn't be displayed like this but anyway displayed here so we can just click on our try duck and see it's saying there's an error let's just let us see what the error is okay i think the way i write the tag is not correct i think maybe i have to put it in an array so let's just try that one See this fix the error. Yeah, now it's better. Mm -hmm. The tax accept a list uh, of names, so you should put it on an array. 
see. Now let's go to the toy dog here. And you can just see, I have put my schedule daily showing me the information about this dog workflow. And it, it ran from this day on, next run ID is, which is today. So okay to run it so uh, I can trigger the duck and see the output here. You can follow if your duck is running successfully or not. Here, I see success, everything is okay. Uh, you can see your success information in different forms. I can see it in graph form. Specify. This is my duck workflow from this particular use case that I'm trying to do. I have two models. I'm checking who is best performing. The output would be either false or true in the first run. So let's say the output is false. So whatever the random number was, it doesn't return a value more greater than 20. So it returns false. Uh, so if I want to, since I'm giving it some dynamic random number, I, I can run it again and see if I run it, run it again and, until the model gave me the right answer. Uh, we can do that. It's just uh, not necessary to do that, but we can do that until we can, or we can just also change the value here. Instead of greater than 20, since 20 is a big number, we can just minimize it to just to see it can throw both possible answers. So it's likely to get whatever the random number is, it's probably it's likely to get a value greater than 2. So let's just run it again. Okay. Now it shows false. I mean true. We get a value. Uh, so this is uh, workflow where your workflow should look like when you deployed it on your uh, airflow. This is so this is the basic the workflow uh, and this one is, is the same thing the functionality that exists here is the same thing it's just to make your more how you write your task is more dynamic if you have this repetitive function or if you have a function that you are planning to use in every task you don't have to write that function repeatedly you can use this task decorator of airflow which can make your way of writing much better so here it's, it's, it's the same it gives the same output like before like this one but it can if you, if you can see it it, uh, it minimizes the code that i'm using because uh, the task of decorator of airflow can understand uh can minimize the work that you're doing here by calling like this functions here and specifying everything and calling each function repeatedly it will minimize it and it will make your job much easier so i would recommend you uh, to read on decorators airflow that can help you there, there are a lot of decorators that can make your job easier when you build your track on the airflow so this is just the same way of writing this same functionality using the airflow decorator it has the same output okay so if you have any question you can go ahead and ask Okay, go ahead, ask. Okay, uh, Getacho, I don't know who raised hand first, but Getacho, you can go ahead, ask. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Thank you. Uh, I try to have a drag file, but uh, I can't. I can't manage to see it in my Airflow dashboard. Or how can I run it for the first time? You have installed Airflow. Sure. You can see the Airflow. Yeah, I can see the Airflow uh, dashboard, but I can't see my dad in that dashboard. Okay, maybe let me go over with the other people question and you can share your screen and maybe we can say together. Okay, maybe. Yeah. 
let me just go over the other questions and you will share your screen. Okay, uh, Hilary. Yes, um, my question is how do you structure the the folders? Uh, as, so we have Airflow and then I uh, I run Airflow, it generated its own files, config dags and logs inside the Airflow, inside Airflow folder. So where do I put my dags in that in that Airflow generated or outside? The main you the, you'll uh, create a DAX folder. Another yeah. one. Yes. Yeah, this one, DAX folder. It should be written under this folder. So I'm um, I'm saying that Airflow creates its own uh folder called Airflow and then another folder called DAX. So should I create a different one in the main directory? Okay. Uh did you did you follow the same step that I did to install the airflow? Maybe you have used another way because uh, when i i don't think that it's the same steps that we you and i follow to install the airflow on our machine okay um okay perhaps i i install in inside uh, another yeah folder. it's just in my method there would be a no airflow folder you will manually create the docs the plugins folders yourself okay so maybe uh, there will be some the guidance on the way you install it on the documentation. Check that out, or you can also use it on in my way. Okay, Jabez. Okay, my question is for uh, our task. I think uh, the the task I have to do in the DAG is that I think to create a table or extract the table uh, but do we create uh, the table first in the uh, postgres and then uh, do it in the yeah you will first store it on your database and you can fetch it on the airflow and you can uh, specify what the doc should implement based on the data Okay, so um, first, the first part is the post Postgres SQL. I should fetch the the data on the Postgres uh, yeah. table. Yeah. Yeah. Not. Thank you. Think of using the web interface. No, uh, Jolie, the, the Airflow is not doesn't make job easier when it comes to creating it on the web interface, you have to manually set up everything on Python code language. So you have to write everything down on the Python module. DBT and others have easier way to, to make it job easier, but Airflow need manual work. Okay, go ahead, Kumi. Okay, uh, thank you. I missed the beginning of the tutorial because I was having some internet issue. So I would like to ask if it is possible to just implement these tags in DBT, like what we did in the morning section. Yeah, it's just the difference is Airflow will give you a management structure. It's not about building a data pipeline when it comes to Airflow, it is a mix a big misconception that happens between what is the purpose of Airflow. Airflow only purpose is just to give your time-based workflow management. So if you need that part, you have to use Airflow. It can, you can give it a scheduler uh, connection to your managing your data pipelines. Okay. The DBT is responsible for building data pipelines, but this one, the focus is not about the data pipeline. It's just the focus about controlling the data pipeline in a specified time. Okay, so we have to implement both separately. Yeah, if I think you guys might be able to integrate DBT with Airflow. So DBT will do the data pipeline part, the processing, and Airflow will help with scheduling when the, to run those tasks and error handling and everything start based on the timeline. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
بینی هم So when it comes to how you can ha you should handle your table, it's up to you. Whatever best to have the final product in the best way possible, you can. You are free to do it. We are gonna give you whatever speaker or the implementation of the process. You you can. You're free to explore. Oh, that's clear. Okay, Getacho, could you uh, share your screen and maybe we can see it together? Can you hear me, Getacho? Sure, I'm trying to hear you. Okay. Can you see now? Yes. Is that not your coach? What about now? Still nothing. Wait. And now? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So where did you initialize your drug on your code here? What is your drug name? My drug name is uh, this one, Traffic Data Industry. Could you use the uh, with context maybe? instead of this one uh, just maybe scroll it down first let me just see to the end yeah. on the drug naming add the with dog with dog after it no no not, uh, on the dark part not okay. after the equal sign add with like this or no yeah it's like that uh, maybe just remove the ingestion drug part entirely no undo that one don't delete that one that part after uh, the ingestion tag variable name mm -hmm. ingestion tag after before the equal sign okay yeah, remove entirely. Uh, no, no. Okay. Remove it. Okay, okay. Yes. okay. Yeah. Remove the equal sign also. And push it back to the to the end. Yeah, like that. Okay, now uh, run it and see if it's working. Uh, I think you are passing the injection somewhere. Okay. This is the name for injection type. You can put those under the And I just uh, share you my code and uh, readjust it based on that one. Okay, okay. It's just this is a typing error. It will work. Okay. So this is how I wrote my rug, and you don't have to change. Uh, just change how I structured just based on this one. Yeah. Here. Where are you from, me? Uh, should I? I don't think it was the video on the chat. Okay. 
let me just share you on the Slack. I think this has a line limitation. Okay, okay. I will go through it, and if I don't get the yeah. solution, I will go. I will come back to you. It's just a type error. It will work. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Is there another question? If not, I guess we can end the tutorial. If you have any questions, you can tag us or on the Slack. I'm going to start the recording now. Thank you for joining in, everyone.